cardio is king, right? Mm, maybe. Cardio certainly is wonderful for us, for our endurance and for our aerobic uh, health. However, would it surprise you to know that researchers, including those at Harvard, have significant evidence that weight training, not cardio, including running, cycling, and swimming are better for us in age-related matters, slowing down the aging process. The positive effects of weight training are well documented. It is so good for us on so many levels, from increasing our metabolism to increasing our overall athletic performance, as well as reducing stress and improving our mood. Don't we all wanna be in a better mood as well? we are gonna reduce the chance of injury, which as we age again, is just like the kiss of death. We do not want that. As well, rate training reduces our risk of cardiovascular disease and diabetes. In conjunction with these overall benefits of weight training, there are specific age-related benefits that we, as we are aging, and here I am at 60, that we are really looking for as giant benefits. And number one on that list is bone density. You know what? The dreaded osteoporosis. Bone density and weight training are linked. Something that's really positive. Again, our balance. You know what? Who wants to have the fall? I remember when my mom was in the, the nursing home, as soon as the fall happened, loss of mobility, really loss of so many positive parts of our life. Then our joint mobility. These are now, that's another thing that the weight training helps us with. We need to keep our joints moving. Postural, again, I, you know, I did mention this in another video, but as we age, we want to hunch over and weight training is really gonna help us with that. And another positive is our skin. Weight training, because we then have muscle underneath between our bone and our skin, our skin is smoother and less wrinkly. So those benefits on the age-related side are really phenomenal. In fact, there are five exercises specifically aimed at anti-aging, and I wanna show you those today. When you start off with the weights, if you're not used to using weights, really ramp yourself up. Don't go crazy right off the bat, or you're really gonna be sore. So I suggest, you know, start lighter, work up. But once you do get the hang of it and you do get into the motions, if you're not feeling fatigued or that you feel like you've actually worked the muscles after an eight count, then try to increase the weights a little bit. Don't just kind of slack it off. I'm gonna start now with a hip bridge. Also squats are giving us the same motion, but the hip bridge is not gonna put any focus on our knees and a lot of us are having knee issues at this point. So I'm gonna start with a hip bridge. Second exercise is a deadlift. We're gonna focus on the hamstrings, all right? So these ones you should be able to use a heavier weight. And we can do stationary lunges, we can do alternating lunges, and we can also do walking lunges. So you can always mix it up a little bit. Okay, so moving on to the upper body, the next recommended exercise are rows. Again, looking for our back health and our upper back here. So we can do um, reciprocating rows, just bent over. The next exercise is a chest press. Now if you don't have a bench, don't worry about that. You can just lay on the floor and uh, do it that way. And again, 
just start with your dumbbells that you feel comfortable with. I've got, I've got one of these 18s aside, I think. These are better body, I have adjustable ones, so I'm feeling even stronger, I can go to the next weight, which is 27. But I'm gonna start with these 18s. And so a bench press or a chest press. with the exercises that we already did, focusing on the upper and the lower. Also, we wanna add in two other exercises, a plank and a V-sit, focusing on the core to bring it all together. Again, those, you can start small, low amount of time, low hold, and try to work yourself up. So, you can start with a plank, you can do forearm plank, sometimes do a high plank, whatever, it really doesn't matter, just mix it up. exciting and interesting stuff. So do not tune out at this point. I have been reading a lot about something called cellular senescence. And I first read about it and I thought, what the heck is this? Well, let me tell you, until 1960, scientists believed that our cells kept dividing, kept dividing, kept dividing, kind of to infinity. But in, in 1961, a researcher actually discovered that cells do not keep going and they, they do actually have a finite lifespan. And, but what happens is they stop dividing and they just kind of float around and they're what are called senescent cells. And these senescent cells are in our body and they're really like zombie cells because they're not doing anything anymore. And when we're young, we are able to clear out those cells through, because our immune system is much stronger, we are able to clear out those cells. And what happens is when we don't clear out those cells, how they equate it, and I really like the analogy, is like having a piece of moldy fruit in your fruit bowl and how it can contaminate your whole bowl. And we really don't want that. So we want our body to optimally be able to rid ourselves of these cells. Although not all senescent cells are bad, um, and the, the whole part of cellular senescence is not all bad because sometimes you want bad cells to stop dividing, like cancer cells, for example. But we really want to clear out those lingering zombie cells. And there has been a lot of research surrounding that. And as we age, what they're finding is that these cells are blocking us up and maybe be contributing to Alzheimer's and dementia and osteoporosis and other age-related diseases. And researchers are looking at something now, medications called senolytics, which will supposedly help us to rid our body of these zombie senescent cells. And the thing is that nothing is really proven yet, although I must say that the Mayo Clinic apparently has patented many, many of these things. But the most interesting part, and why I've actually brought this up to you today, is the number one thing that researchers have found the most promising tool for us to rid our body of these senescent cells is exercise. And that is like a eureka. Scientists are saying they are not looking for these senescent cells or the clearing of these senescent cells to guarantee that we're gonna rid ourselves of all disease and nor are we going to just, in fact, find the fountain of youth. And they're not looking to find the fountain of youth. And one of the researchers said, Christopher Wiley, I think his name is Christopher Wiley, said, I'm not looking for the fountain of youth. I'm looking for the fountain of not being sick when I'm older. And that, isn't that what we're looking for? This is really cutting age stuff. And I have to tell you that my daughter, my youngest daughter, Elizabeth, who is a genius, really, basically, and she's doing her PhD in neuroscience. And when she came home several weeks ago and I started telling her, I said, oh, I'm reading the most exciting stuff about senescence and cellular senescence and senescent cells. And have you ever heard of that? She's like, uh, mom? Yeah. Duh. She says in her research, and she started up doing Alzheimer's because of my mom that has now moved into uh, Parkinson's for her 
um, PhD, she said they often add senescent cells into their, pro their cellular profile to see the reaction. So it's really something that has really broken in and there's a lot more explosion in this coming up. But you know what? They all are agreeing that it's exercise. So today I spoke, I really tried to stress the fact that as we age, you know, the, the weights are really super important, especially for those things that we need to worry about as we age, the bone density, and et cetera, et cetera. But all exercise is fantastic. And all exercise is what's gonna keep us moving and keep us active and keep our life vigorous and keep us happy. And isn't that what we're all looking for? We wanna be healthy, we wanna be happy, we want to be in motion. And I'm gonna encourage you to Google cellular senescence and find out a little bit more about it because it is fascinating, fascinating stuff. And Leonard Hayflick, the one who discovered the senescent cells, who is, by the way, 94 and still teaching at the University of California in San Francisco. And that is incredible in itself. And his book, How and Why We Age, has been translated into a gazillion different languages. And I don't have it yet, but I'm getting it. And I hope that you will too, because you know what? Don't we all wanna just slow down that aging process? And well, I know I do. So I'm gonna look forward to seeing you all in the next one.